Hi guys, Gary Goff from Shoots My Photography Training. In this short series of films, I'm going to be demonstrating to you guys just how good entry-level cameras are. I've got a Nikon D5000 camera here, an 18 to 55 mil lens. If you don't know what any of that means, it's not relevant. The most important thing is, it's an entry-level camera. I picked this up secondhand on eBay for £130, that's all, and it works a treat. As you saw earlier, I also have a tripod, sturdy tripod, it cost me £20. If I was gonna to add to that, possibly it might cost me maybe another £30 to buy a cheap set of neutral density filters. And that would be it. That's all I'd need. That's all that's required to go out there day after day, night after night, morning after morning, and shoot fantastic landscape pictures. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the films. So just to put things into perspective, it's six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> That's Lee behind me. So just to uh, just to fill you in exactly what's happened now that I've driven across to Leeds and we've jumped in at Lee's builder's van. Why do all Volkswagen drivers actually hate when uh, people like me call their vans builder's vans? I've no idea. But anyway, so let's say it's around about uh, five past six now. We're heading to Flamborough Head this morning. Now when we get to Flamborough Head, arrival time at the moment is half past seven and sun up is 20 to 8 so it's a bit of a rush when we get there fingers crossed we'll pick up a bit of time on the way down anyway as long as it's just a bit of a smooth journey it should be fine and that's uh, that's it that's where we're at time now it's around about 10 to 8 we pretty much missed sun up uh, but it's not really relevant we slowed down if I'm honest with you because typical weather here in the UK it's overcast I'll do a sweep round in a second just so you guys can see it doesn't really matter though we'll still grab our gear head down to the sea grab some lovely shots and we'll just go from there it should be a fun day look at that there though look at that no not that <laughs> look at that <laughs> I think we should get the drone out and do a quick stop around the, uh, the lighthouse Let's do it! of a sunrise I'll be perfectly honest like I said earlier because of the cloud cover it's pretty horrendous however this is just totally absolutely amazing let me just spin that camera around must admit it does look a lot nicer when the sea's in just take a look at that there out and start taking pictures it's not about trying to to be the best or come away with the best picture that anybody's ever seen from whatever location you're at just get out there have some fun take pictures and learn the trade learn photography but more importantly just don't be lazy I'm just checking this water by the way because the tide's coming in now can you see it rapidly in the head <laughs> just keep my eye on that to make sure I don't get cut off which again super important um, okay, so I'm pretty much going to have a look around now and what I'm always looking for is the most important things is get the most basics right. When I say the most basics, try and work with rules of thirds. If you don't know what rules of thirds are, you just Google it and uh, you'll soon understand what rules of thirds are. Foreground interest, background interest. 
and let's try and keep the sky detail in. That is super, super important. So you might well want to invest in maybe some neutral density filters. So the most important thing is just don't be lazy. Do not be a lazy photographer. But look, you know, you go out, you spend all day taking pictures. You might end up with two or three absolutely nailers. But you multiply that by a dozen times that you go out and all of a sudden you've got a great body of work. That's what it's all about. It's not trying to get that one nailer every time you take the picture. Okay, so don't worry about that. Just get out and have some fun. setup like I said I'm using the actual Nikon to D5000 camera so uh, as we mentioned earlier we picked that up for about £130 on eBay second hand it's got a standard kit lens on there as well 18 to 55 mil lens which is a standard a crop sensor as well which if I'm honest with you because I'm not used to it I really am struggling with uh, it's not really a problem though like I say you don't have to rush out and spend copious amounts of money and you know to be a proper landscape photographer you need a full frame camera because that's just not the case at all it just means we have to work in a slightly different way. Remember we can take a lot of panoramic shots where we stitch images together. It works equally well. With my standard camera, I've obviously got a Canon 5D Mark III, 1DX Mark II as well. Both full frame cameras. Having said that, every time I come uh, on location and take landscape shots, I still do the same thing. I still tend to sweep my pictures and stitch them together. Okay, so look. I'm looking down here, if you can see, I've got this rock here, which is going to be my main focal point. That rock there is going to be my main focal point in this image. I quite like that. What's important now, I'll go for a nice wide angle shot, as wide as I can, so it's 18 mil. I focused on that point there. Usually, they talk about a third of the way to the frame. Roughly, that is a third of the way to the frame. But the most important thing is that's such an eye-catching part of the image. People will naturally look and be drawn to it, so make sure that point there is actually focused. Once I've focused on there, then a good tip, turn your focus then to manual. So that way it's not hunting and trying to look for the focus point every time you take a picture. Set your timer as well, again, just so it allows any, uh, for any handshaking. Every time you press a button, even though it's on a sturdy tripod, it's still uh, it's likely to move. Okay, so op options. Um, I've opted for the lowest ISO I can get on this particular camera, it's ISO 200. I can trick it down to ISO 100, I know that for ISO 200 is perfectly fine. My aperture, because I want everything in focus, I need my aperture at around about uh, F11, F16 is my go-to aperture every time I work with landscape, so I've set the camera at F16 as well. Um, on my shutter speed then, obviously, in this, in this, uh, in this particular light at the moment, I think it's around about a 60th of a second. Now, again, because I'm not using my normal kit, what I'd love to do is shove my Lee 10 stopper on there, which means that would probably offer me either anything between a 30 second or a two minute exposure, which would obviously render this picture completely different. Instead of all these crashing waves that you can see in the background, you're gonna get that nice smoothie, milky effect. That, of course, is up to you. But I can't use that today. My ND filters won't work on this lens either, so I'm just gonna have to wing it, if I'm perfectly honest. But it just goes to show that the light, to be fair today, the sky is good, there's drama in the clouds. Another good tip as well, if the sky's slightly overexposed in the image, then underexpose your image slightly, knowing that I can lift up the image, bring up the brightness in post-production. But it's really, really important to make sure that we maintain the sky detail. That is just super, super important for us landscape photographers. And that's it. I'm gonna take one or two shots from here, then I'm gonna do a sweep right across, all the way across there. Let's just see what we end up with. Right, so we've just left Flamborough Head. Didn't quite work out there as well as we'd anticipated, obviously because the weather's uh, so crappy. The thing is, when we start talking about the weather, 
the wind you can put up with the wind it's not really a problem you can deal with that you can deal with if it's too bright bad skies and cold and snow and so on and so forth what you just can't deal with is just the rain constant rain there's a bit of sea fret there as well uh, and it's forever having to clean your lens is just not very exciting but uh where are we off now we're going to whitby we're going to whitby now and we're going to stop off at the um what's the name of that bay you said Saltwick Bay. Saltwick Bay. Yeah, do again, do a little bit of research online um, around about this coastline there. The, I've not actually photographed it before. I've actually, I've never been there before. So this is what's good about getting out and about and exploring. Saltwick Bay. If you Googled it, there's a, an old shipwreck down there. To be fair, it's not much of a shipwreck. It's like a bit of scrap metal. But uh, you'll kind of see what it's like when we get there, and that's pretty cool. But uh, digressing ever so slightly, and it's, it's quite funny. I'm out and about in Lee's van. Lee's got a, what is it Lee? T5. It's a Volkswagen, um, uh, it's a Tyler's van. That's what no, it is. it's not a Tyler's van. It, it's not a Tyler's van apparently. I say it's a Tyler's van. It's I'm just, sure there's some people watching this right now who will drive a VW T5 and it's their pride and joy. And comment below, because I bet you wave to other people, other T5 <laughs> drivers on the road. Um, I swear to God, I've never seen anything design. like it. Just like motorcyclists. Motorcyclists will kind of dip their, <laughs> dip their head or something and just kind of acknowledge other motorcyclists on the road. Well, this Burke does that with his van to other fellow Tylers. T T5ers, they're not Tylers. T T5ers, apparently. Yeah. I'm swearing right now. So we take pride in your van, and you'll, in fact, we'll put a picture up of my van that we took <gasps> in the Isle of Skye. We'll use that one. And you <laughs> can see. V-A-N, van. What do you do in a van? I'll tell you what. So many, tile kitchens. <laughs> so many people are going to come and give me some grief on that. I don't care. That's fine. Love your van. I forgot to mention as well, uh, when we turned up at Flamborough Head this morning, it was uh, still fairly dark. Just got there slightly before sun up. We parked in a car park. Uh, has a capacity probably for about five maybe six hundred cars it's absolutely huge bear in mind it's winter time a little bit of rain bit of sleep bit of snow horrible time of the year there's us and one other car parked in the car park anyway off we tread two hours later we came back and guess what <laughs> we got a souvenir <laughs> a souvenir of our trip to Flamborough Head. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Council Worker. Thank you for your kind consideration. It's closed. However, six foot four and a low wall. It's very tempting. So Okay, next location, Whitby. Take a look at those crashing waves. It's just something exciting about them, I'm not sure what it is. That's pretty special. Get a 10 foot builder on that, milk all that out, that'll look quite special.
Okay, so the next location today is a lovely seaside village. It's called Staithes, probably about 10 miles away from where we actually were. It's still situated on the east coast. So unfortunately, obviously with the sun setting on the west coast here in the UK, we're not gonna see the sun should start to kind of drop down, the light will drop. But uh, just while we're here, it's quite nice. I've seen a small competition here I quite like. There's a yellow boat. Uh, I'm just going to pinpoint the one boat, a whole row of boats there. I'm going to pinpoint the one boat, which is a yellow boat. And in the background, there's a local pub called the, the Cobb and Lobster. They do nice food there, I know that anyway. That's yellow as well. So with the yellow background, the yellow foreground, I just thought it might look quite nice. So we're just going to give that a go. Obviously, you've got one thing to be aware of now. We've got boats pretty much ripping away with the sea. So you don't really want to slow your shutter speed down too much. Otherwise, you'll end up with... Uh, a lot of blurring going on and that's uh, that won't be very good at all so just make sure your shutter speed is up quite high even if it means you have to ramp up your iso never be afraid of that remember if you uh, create any any noise then you can always remove the noise in post processing so don't worry about that don't be afraid of ramping up your iso if you need to it's quite cool give that a go That pretty much wraps up the photography time really I suppose certainly here in stays it's quarter past four we've been at it since I woke up this morning at quarter to five so it's been a long old day still thoroughly enjoyable though and we've still got one more place to visit and then most important time of the day is what Lee hey, what? what's the most important time of the day fish and chip time fish and chip time haha <laughs> cannot come to the east coast and not have fish and chips absolutely did you hear him then you have to have fish and chips it's the law end of it makes your pictures a lot better yeah absolutely uh okay so just to point out i'm not overly excited about this if i'm perfectly honest the sky looks quite nice so we should get some quite uh, quite decent drama in there all i've gone for really to finish off is a nice big wide open shot it's not all about creating award-winning photographs every time you click that shutter button it's not just get out there and just enjoy it. <laughs> 